The Battle of Bannockburn took place in the year 1314 and was fought in the Scottish town of Stirling. By 1304, Scotland had been fully conquered by England. But under the command of Robert the Bruce, Scottish forces began slowly taking back English military strongholds in Scotland. By 1314, only two fortresses were under English command. Stirling Castle was one of them. The castle was under siege, but an English army led by Edward II met at Berwick and marched to Stirling, aiming to break the siege. The English army was the largest to ever invade Scotland. It consisted of about 14,000 infantry and around 3,000 cavalry. The Scottish army, led by Robert the Bruce, had about 7,000 soldiers, mainly pikemen, but also a few hundred archers and cavalry. The Scots had also dug hidden pits along the Bannockburn to prevent large cavalry charges. The battle took place over two days and began when a small group of English cavalry crossed the Bannockburn ahead of the main army. They were met by a Scottish unit led by Robert the Bruce. An English knight saw Bruce and charged towards him. The knight rode a better horse and was armed with a lance and shield. But Bruce avoided the charging knight and killed him with an axe to his head. The Scottish infantry now attacked the English, forcing them back across the Bannockburn. Another group of English cavalry tried to make their way towards the castle, but a unit of Scottish infantry rushed to block their route. The Scottish were armed with pikes and many of the English were killed when they charged straight into the Scottish line. Despite many attempts, the English were unable to break the Scottish formation and a counter-attack by the Scots forced the English to retreat back to the main army. The English did not attack any more on this day. On the second day of the battle, the entire English army crossed the Bannockburn, but at a different point from the previous day. This new battlefield was between two streams making it extremely narrow. The Scottish army emerged from the forest and advanced towards the English line, a move the English did not expect. In a confused response, a group of cavalrymen charged towards the Scots, but were brought down and killed. The Scots continued their advance and some were able to attack the reserve cavalry still waiting for orders to charge. Although the battlefield was congested, some of the Welsh archers were able to fire their arrows to repel the Scottish line. This worked temporarily until Bruce ordered his cavalry to attack the archers. But Bruce now saw an opportunity to use his own archers and Scottish arrows began falling on the English line. The cramped battlefield restricted the movements of the English army and they were being pushed back by the Scottish advance. With the Scots winning, some of the untrained soldiers of the Scottish baggage train ran onto the battlefield. To the English, this appeared to be Scottish reinforcements and they began to retreat in all directions. Some ran towards Stirling Castle, but others drowned in the Bannockburn as they tried to escape. King Edward was escorted from the battlefield by a group of knights. At the end of the battle, the English army lost about 3,000 soldiers, but the Scots only lost about 100. This was a victory for the Scottish, although Scotland had to wait another 14 years before Robert the Bruce was recognised by the English as King of an Independent Scotland.